Have you been impatiently waiting to see my transmission controller absolutely nuke my Honda Odyssey's transmission? Well, buckle in, buckaroo. Welcome. I'm Tom. I've been working on making the most badass second gen Honda Odyssey ever. And in this video, I'm going to showcase the final approach for my transmission controller. If you're thinking that this is the video where I'm going to install it and actually destroy my transmission, well, I regret to inform you, lo siento, this is not quite that video. Not yet. You see, I just been really busy this week, so I'm just kinda almost there, but not quite. Don't you worry, pal. There's no way I'm letting a few responsibilities get in the way of me giving you video every single week. Or at least, you know, that's the plan. Now, let's talk about what's going on with the good old transmission obliteration machine 3000. If you feel like it's been a while since the last TCU video, I'd agree with you, 100%, no questions asked. I may be stupid, but I know better than to trust a breadboard in a car. You know, with all the vibrations and all the shaky-wakey and all that stuff. My original plan was to bench test with a breadboard and then move on to a perf board to start some on-road tests. And then once I knew everything worked, I'd put everything on a PCB and have a final product. Now it turns out, perf boards are really fucking annoying. Who would have thought it would take me two hours to wind up with this? This is it. Look at it. A connector and two resistors. Since that absolutely burned my biscuits to bits, I had no option but to move directly to the PCB stage. I quickly designed a PCB and sent it off for production. Now, now however, in classic comic style, I woke up the following morning and immediately realized it was like an epiphany I had. I forgot several resistors in the design and I was gonna have to update the PCB and order a new batch. Now unfortunately, PCB production is not one of those things that can just happen overnight and have a finished product at your doorstep in a matter of days. In my case, it took about two weeks between ordering and receiving the PCBs, and that's part of why I haven't had an update for you guys on the transmission controller lately. So now that I've got the PCBs, I was able to get to work, which meant populating the PCBs and starting to print some stuff that related to the controller. And these extra parts I needed to print included a gear indicator, the shift lever itself. Well, okay, I didn't get all that done, but I'm still working on it. And the enclosure for the transmission controller. It actually took me four times to get the transmission controller enclosure correct. The first time is probably my favorite failure. I wound up with the USB port cut out on the side for the Arduino. Completely misplaced. I measured from the wrong standoff. Don't lie, we've all had some projects that took a little more work than we thought they were going to. That transmission controller enclosure is definitely the one for me. I never thought a box would be so freaking difficult to get right. Let me know down in the comments what kind of projects you've had that kind of went the same way. Oh, and when I made the gear indicator, I got to use the pin crimper for the first time. I've never used one before. And I wasted several pins before I found out that it's a directional tool. I was using it the wrong direction, which was causing the crimper to be way too tight on the pins and it basically severed the wire that was going into the pin. For some reason, these pins are really expensive compared to other ones. I mean, we're talking like almost a dollar a piece. I don't know why. If they were a lot cheaper, I would not be bothered by this at all. Now on the gear indicator, another thing I did was I made sure that the first gear and torque converter lockup LEDs were connected to the RX and TX pins of the Arduino. And what that allows for is essentially to use it as a diagnostic tool and see any activity that's going on while you're programming it or what have you. And to top it all off, I made it do a really neat little animation whenever it finishes booting, partly as a diagnostic tool just to see that it has finished booting, but also just because it's cool as hell. At this point, I'm literally just steps away from being able to install the controller in the Odyssey. And I'm also asking that if you enjoyed this video and you want to help me out in the algorithm, go ahead and drop a like. I really appreciate it. All I really need to do is take some pins from the factory harness, put them into the little 16 pin connector that connects to the controller, and a few little other odds and ends. And I should be able to start testing out the controller in real life. Well, okay, not really in real life. I'm gonna have it on jack stands. It's gotten really cold lately. I don't wanna take the van out again. See, we're going into third winter here in Pennsylvania. If you've never been to Pennsylvania, it's really annoying. We get like winter and it like gets warm for a few weeks and like we think it's spring and then like it's not. So it's winter again. We call that second winter. Sometimes you get a fourth or even fifth winter. It's terrible. Don't move here. Anyways, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss when I actually upload that video. 
Maybe you'll get to see me completely destroy a perfectly good transmission. I don't know. Hopefully it works. Maybe it'll be fun if it doesn't. And if you want to be one of the first people to see it happen, go ahead and click that bell icon so you can get notifications whenever I upload. Oh, and uh, I still need to install the wideband sensor. It's sitting like right up there. So I'm not going to be able to take it out on the road until I do that anyways, because I don't want to put a whole lot of load on the engine until I know what's going on with the tune. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Things are a little different in this video. Let me know how you felt about it. I kind of enjoyed this little more casual filming style, but at the same time, I feel like I'm not quite delivering as much. In the meantime, feel free to go ahead and check out some of my other content. It'll be somewhere like there, there. Um, and as always, stay classy.